Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Camlin Ice Sports York for the home opener of the 2023-24 GMHL season between the North York Renegades and the St. George Ravens. It's a new year, a new look, a lot of new faces on this team, but the goal still remains the same, and that is to be competitive and go as far as they can as the year goes on. Begin their next chapter in their journey by taking on the St. George Ravens. Starting goalies, Nick Gagne is between the pipes for North York, and in the other end, getting the start for St. George, is Daniel Rose. We're underway. Renegades are starting with their top line of Salov, Rendy, and Braden Mitchell, who was acquired by the Renegades this past offseason from Tamiskaming. Usual suspects at the back end. Andriopoulos and Summersall are back there. Here's Andriopoulos. Those five are going up against Ellis, Warrens, Toddington, Furtado, and Bruyere for St. George. It's dumped down to the North York end. Jedi Summersall is back on it, being pressured by Cole Ellis. He is nailed into the corner boards, and Ellis is going to go for that. So 37 seconds into the first period, Renegades are going to have a power play here as Cole Ellis heads to the box. Yeah, there's a hit from behind. Referee knew it right away. Cole Ellis caught. Renegades captain Jedi Summersall on the numbers. Very easy call for the officials to make, and so 37 seconds into this contest, the Renegades are going to go on the power play here. Some more new faces as Elias Najem, who was acquired by the Renegades this past offseason from the Bradford Bulls, is going to take the draw. He's out there along with Evan Gupta and Evan McKinstry. Or Gupta and Jake McKinstry. Correct that. A couple of new faces along with Stevenson and Summersall as it is cleared immediately by St. George off the draw. Brought ahead by Najem and into the zone. He dishes off to Gupta. Trying to play it back to Summersall and did. Trying to shake away from McDougal. Stevenson dishes off for Summersall. Right point creeps and shoots one. Scores! There's the first goal for the Renegades in the 23-24 season, and it's none other than the captain coming through on the power play. It's a great start indeed for the North York Renegades. Jedi Somersault fired that one through a wicked screen. There were a bunch of guys that were parked in front screening Daniel. Established in 1984, Abrams Towing is proud to be the largest towing... Seconds into the... Opening period, the Renegades are off to a great start. Right, Somersault has the tally, and Salov takes it in behind as the Renegades look to keep causing trouble. Eric Stevenson centering pass broken up by Ajvir Singh, and Braden Mitchell will pick it up and dump it into the corner for Rendy. Randy trying to shake away from a man. Referee went down as a shot by Mitchell is blocked in front. And the rebound is cleared but not out by Thomas Grossi. Kept alive and got on to Mitchell. Mitchell plays it back to Stevenson left point. Shoots one and that's off a leg. Into the corner it's taken here by Thomas Grossi. Back there for St. George taking it behind his net. And now the Ravens will look to start a rush and out they come to center. Braden Mitchell tried to poke it off of him but Singh stayed with it. But this one is stolen here as well by Eric Stevenson. And he will circle back with it. Just over two minutes gone by in the opening frame as Randy shoots one, misses high. Rebound for Salov, and a stop is made by Rose. Another chance is jammed wide by Mitchell on the backhand. Taken here into the corner and cycled back down low for Mitchell in behind. Trying to take it and tried to miss again, and scores! Holy jumping! What a goal by Braden Mitchell! Welcome to the Renegades! It's 2-0! Oh, are you kidding me? Braden Mitchell just pulled off the Michigan. What a goal indeed. Talk about making a great first impression. Braden Mitchell, who was acquired this past offseason by the Renegades from the Tamiskaming Titans, they knew that Mitchell was going to be a very effective player, 
And that was an absolutely unreal first goal for Braden Mitchell with the North York Renegades. Unbelievable. After the Renegades, I said a face-off is coming up in their end. In to take it is Ellison. He tried one right off the draw. Gagne made a stop with ease. Well, there's a recent acquisition by St. George Cole Ellis, who was picked up not too long ago from Niagara. Had a great chance right off the face-off there, but Gagne stopped him. Taken into the corner here by Jack Woods. Centering pass is broken up by the other number 98, Reese Furtado. And yes, Jack Woods is wearing the number 98. He has been assigned the number 78, but the number 78 jersey has not arrived yet. And another thing to note is the Renegades have some new uniforms debuting this season. They're slightly different from their old design that they used the past two seasons, but they are really Amazing looking. And so are the guys out there. Off to another great start. Back with this is Warrens trying to shake away from a couple of renegades. A penalty's coming up. I believe it's going to be on Billio. Both him and Jake McKinstry nailed Warrens. And a little over three and a half minutes into this contest, interference is the call on Billio. Tyler Warrens, to his credit, tried to get out of the way of that oncoming check from Billio, but at the same time, he just dished off the puck right before then, and I got nailed without the puck. And appearance is the call on that. So as the Ravens look to strike back and get their first one, controlling this is Grossi outletting this one a Saker. Saker passing it up the left side off the stick of Landon McDougal and recovered here by Rowan Isaac. So George looks to get set up again as it's played up to Singh, but Eisen brings it in offside as Ajvir Singh was a step ahead. St. George has got to establish some chemistry. Rowan Eisen tried to bring it into the attacking zone, but Ajvir Singh had some trouble holding up his movement and a very easy offside call for the linesman there. He's off controlled by St. George. Cade Saker plays it up to Singh, who dumps it down the right side. And back to this is Jedi Summersall, the Renegades captain, engaging in a battle there with Landon McDougal. Eisen in there as well for St. George. Andriopoulos looking to help him out for the Renegades and did. And poked it back into the corner and cleared it down to her feet. That's a nice. Smart play by Andriopoulos. He knew Somersault was in trouble, but he stole it right back and cleared it away. Now here could be a possible shorthanded chance. And Cheesy dumped it back into the corner for Naja. Trying to shake away from Saker, but it is stolen right back here by Logan Lausch. And outletted to Rigel Brar at center and into the zone comes Ellis. Ellis trying to get a backhander off, forwarded there by Reale, who steals it and clears it down. Renegades PK is looking very solid here. Early on. Owen Toddington. Outlets this one of Bruyere at center. Cross ice into the zone comes Ellis. Shoots one and a save is made by Gagne and a juicy rebound is stopped and play is called because Gagne's mask got knocked off. And Nick Gagne alertly notified the officials that he had a mask malfunction and play was stopped immediately. Gagne is another guy that Daryl Lloyd has a lot of faith in. He's actually committed to playing at Arizona State University in the NCAA in next season, 24-25. And I think it's safe to say that a lot of scouts down there at ASU are gonna be keeping an eye on him as the season goes on. Toddington outlets this to center off the stick of Warrens. Furtado after it, but it's stolen here by Ray Allen, cleared out to center. McKinstry tried to play it up, could not. So it is taken right back here and brought in by Stevenson. Dropped it right back off to McKinstry. Centering pass does not connect with Stevenson. Back 
comes St. George out to center. This could be a three on two, but the pass is too far for Warrens to take. And so Oren Grawlman will toss it back and get a return from Reale. And now play is called as the puck gets deflected into the North York pitch. Fourteen eleven left to go in the first period. For those of you just tuning in, hi, I'm Cliff Kirby. Renegades playing in their home opener are off to a great start. Jedi Somersault got the first goal of the game on the power play, and then not too long after, Braden Mitchell got his first goal as a Renegade as he successfully pulled off what is known by many as the Michigan move. Dump back down. And Kieran Ryan is on it for North York. Going to skate this to center, and he does. And it's brought in by McKinstry. Trying to drop it off for Grawlman, but that's stolen by Rowan Eisen. Taken back into the corner and swung back around for it to be handled by Grossi. Grossi will skate this to center. Trying to get by Rendy and moves it over the line. Dumps it down the left side and in behind the net. Going after it is Jack Woods. Nailed for Tato in the corner. And they continue to battle down in Death Valley. Continue mashing and bashing. Eisen trying to come away with it. Stolen here, and Roman tried to get it out, but can't. But it is taken out here, and into the zone comes Rendy for a feed, and Salov missed wide on the right. Taken back here into the corner by Rendy. Trying to shake away from Saker and taken in behind. Mitchell trying to center run. Stolen here by Singh and clear to the line and out. This is Andriopoulos. Playing it through the middle, and into the zone comes Rendy, shifting off to the left. Trying to center one for Salah, too far for him. Back into the corner again. Salah trying to keep this play alive, but it is not as he's forced to center here by McDougal. Sent all the way down, no icing. Saker back on this for St. George. Randy off a steal, bounced off a stick and played to center here by McDougal. And back with this is the Randy's captain, Jedi Somersault. Yes. Already mentioned, got the first goal of the game. Mitchell got the one after that to make it 2 nothing. This is where we still stand now. Plays called on a North York offside. Najem in a take the draw against Ellis. Outside the St. George line, it is won by them. The Renegades take it right back again, and Najem circles back in the neutral zone. Put it up the left side of McKinstry, who dumps it down. Now it's loose at the side, and Rose seals the post nicely to prevent Najem from jamming one in the front side. That's a play that goaltenders are always trained to make. Make sure that they can seal off enough of the post as they can. The last time and tried to sneak one in there. And that chance is just not. Taken in behind, Najem trying to center one. No luck though. A couple of Ravens were on him. McKin Street trying to cycle it back down low. Najem is spun off by Toddington and they continue to battle. Ellis played it around. Stolen here by McKin Street. Takes it to the outside and hands off to Andriopoulos. Shoots one off a couple of legs in in the corner. Taken here by Ellison, played up to center for Brar, And now he dishes off to an open side where Furtado awaits this and dumps it down. Brar and Summersall come together. Stolen here and Bilio played it out to center, but it's intercepted immediately by Eisen and tossed back to Coddington. Then up the right side, misses Ellis. Andriopoulos back, then Summersall, and then quickly up the right side, connects on Abilio. Bilio gains the zone. Wait, speeds one in front, and Kinstria is stopped by... Rose, that's a big stop there. That was a great play. Started by Renegade's captain back in their end. A very quick outlet pass at the right side to Bilio, and McKinstry was breaking right down Main Street and got a great chance, but Rose was able to deny him. Wrap around the tent for Manchisi, couldn't get that one by. So he plays it back to Stevenson at the left point and cycles it right back down to him in the near hash marks. Then was nailed by McDougal as it's sent in front again. Stolen here. Ooh, and a big hit there by Reale as he just nailed Tyler Warrens. Back with this at his line is Evan Gupta. 
We'll toss it back to Stevenson. He will take a bit of a survey and play it off to Reale, who moves up the left side. Dumping it down and wide of the net. And in the corner, Reale's back on it and hands it back for a win. Trang and a shot misses Hyde. A couple of big hits came along after the words as well as it's sent to center here by Eisen. Pass there, connects with Mancheesi. We'll pitch fork this one down as Warrens took a run at him. And it's played right back up again, and Najvir Singh tried to make a move around Reale to gain entry. That is roughed off nicely there by 87 in white. Yes, that is Mario Reale. He is assigned the number 71 that he's had last year, but like the aforementioned Mitchell, that jersey has not arrived yet. Center in front again. Stolen here and flung to center by Logan Lausch. And Ryan back for it. Icing called against St. George. Nine thirty-eight remaining in period number one. Renegades are leading by a score of 2 2 nothing. Home opener against the St. George Ravens. Randy out there to take the draw against Ellis. And it is won by Ellis. Toss right back down behind the net, though. Set in front again, and play is called because the net was knocked off its holders. Randy as Rose was trying to slide from post to post. But unfortunately, the net was knocked off its holders as Rose was coming across trying to stop that. Randy wins the drop. Shot here by Mitchell. Misses wide on the left. Caroms around to the left point where Andriopoulos holds it and dumps it down into the corner intended for Randy but stolen. But now a battle ensues in behind the net. Mitchell centers one in front. Salah scores! Just before the net was knocked off, Salov got that one by to make it 3-0. That was an absolute yard sale if I've ever seen one. Oh my gosh. There were a couple of guys draped all over Mitchell, but Mitchell just found a way to fight them off and send one right to the front of the net. Nikolai Salov, a long time veteran gets that one by Rose to make it 3 nothing, and that was knocked off but the puck went in before it was forced off its holders so the goal counts 3 nothing. with your he's called as Rose held a bid by Najem face off is coming up to his right Najem in to take the draw against Rowan Eisen. And it is one right to Bilio, who missed wide on the right. Comes around to Somersault right point, keeps it alive, and McKinstry couldn't knock it down. Solon here and outletted to Eisen, who moves up to center. Najem got good position on him and toss it right back. Andriopoulos will fling it in. Bilio, far half wall. Trying to cycle it back down low. Najem couldn't get a hold on that one. Lost a stick as well as it came back to Somersault. Tries to fight off Brar. Getting it back down low again. No luck. Bounces right back to Somersault who keeps it in at the middle point. Trying to shoot one through the screen. Blocked in front. Bilio a stop. Rebound is stopped as well. And covered by Daniel Rose as Elias Najem looked to jam one in. Well, Elias Najem had a great chance there. As mentioned before, Najem was picked up this offseason by the Renegades from Bradford. Knew that he was very effective, especially in their third round series in the playoffs last year. Merrill Lloyd just has that ability to see some special talent in some players, and he saw that in Najem, and he brought him over, and he already has a couple of great chances.
after a St. George offside. Faceoff's coming outside the Renegades line. That led it here and bringing it in the zone though is duped off to Grawlman. And that is paddled away easily by Rose into the corner. Take it in behind now. Toddington stripped that one off of Grawlman. Played back around and out to center and it is Singh. Shifting off to the left, moving into the zone. Singh waits, shoots, and a save is made by Gagne. And the rebound is cleared around for Manchisi to bring out to center. Moving up that right side with room into the zone. Manchisi waits, toe drag, and a shot off this stick of Toddington in behind. Comes around to the right point where it is kept by Ryan. Played back down low. Penalty's coming up. I believe it's going to be against St. George. It will. Manchisi has it in behind. Sent in front again. Play's called. Let's see what it'll be. The call is cross-checking. So with 7.28 left to go in the first period, Renegades are going to have a chance to make it four as Owen Toddington heads off. Yeah, it was another one of those penalties that ensued in a battle along the end boards. Toddington cross-checked one of his guys and an easy call for the officials to make there. Cleared immediately off the tie-up by St. George. Andriopoulos is going to go back for this one. Cole Ellis is going to keep an eye on him. As he will skate this out to center, playing it away from Furtado into the zone. Now comes Salov. Salov trying to use his speed to his advantage, takes it in behind, plays it around for Mitchell. Cross ice back to the left point. It's Andriopoulos with a shot save. Rebound is covered by Rose as Nikolai Salov was parked in front. You always want to have guys parked in front screening the goalie when you fire a long shot from the blue line like Andriopoulos just did. Salov was doing a great job there trying to take away the eyes of Daniel Rose on that chance. Off the draw, it is taken in behind by Rendy who creeps out to the outside and hands back to Andriopoulos. Then Mitchell far side, looking for an option. Still hangs on to it. Mitchell still controls. Got it off to Rendy's side of the net. Center one in front. Broken up here by Sakert. And played back around to the near side where it is picked up and cleared all the way down by Logan Lush. A minute remains in the penalty on Owen Toddington as Rendy will weave his way through center and into the attacking zone. Makes a nice move. Then is forced away by Eisen as he still controls at the middle point. Got it off to Mitchell, top of the right circle. Trying to get that one around for Najem. Then handing it off to Rendy, right point once more. Other point, it's Andriopoulos. Flinging one to the other side, it is Mitchell. Mitchell looking. Andriopoulos has room on the near side. Send one in front, and that bounce off. On the Another try, they score! Second of the game for Braden Mitchell on the power play. The Renegades strike again, it's 4-0. Well, Braden Mitchell is certainly having himself a night here in his Renegades debut. He's already got a couple of goals. His first one was a beauty, his second one Came off of a sort of a broken play. It was a shot from the point, bounced off a leg, but Mitchell had it come right to him, and he wasted no time putting that one by Rose. Now McKinsey tried to go between the legs, but he could not get that one off, so he takes it into the corner and leaves it for Najem. Najem takes it to the outside, still hangs onto it as he's eyed closely by McDougal. Played off to Reale and over to the near side. It is controlled here by Stevenson, looking for room at the left point. Sends one off the stick of Nathan Downs as it's played back around to the near side where McKinstry awaits this. Trying to center one, no luck there as Brar kept an eye on him. Played back and Stevenson flung one wide and played aside by Rose for Tonnington. Around it comes to Singh. Osgier Singh to center off the stick of McDougal. Played around again and Tonnington intercepted that one. And he's come back quickly, though. It's brought into the zone by McKinstry, making a nice move. Another nice move, and he scores! <laughs> Welcome to the Renegades. Jake McKinstry, put that one in your highlight reel bank. It's 5 nothing. Well, another 
Newcomer to the North York Renegades is making a great first impression. I already saw Braden Mitchell dazzle everyone. Now Jake McKinstry, holy smokes. He dragged that one through a couple of Ravens defenders and made Daniel Rose look sillier than a circus to make it five zip. Renegades are rolling. Poked out to center, chipped down by Mancheesi. And back with this is Cade Saker. Win Trang tried to center one, broken up here by Thomas Grossi. And then to center it's Warrens. Stolen off of him by Mancheesi and tossed back. Andriopoulos brings it across ice for Summers. Over four to go in the first period. Five nothing is the lead, and now they nearly got six as a chance there is thwarted as Win Trang had that chance. Back in the near or the far corner, rather, Saker nearly lost that. Ooh, and Riley Wasick took a run at Lausch. Now a battle ensues near the blue line in front of the St. George bench as it's played back around to the Right point for Somersault, trying to get away from Warrens. And the same for Eisen. Center one in front off the stick of Wasik and out to center. That was a great chance there. Riley Wasik, another newcomer to this North York Renegade squad, had a great opportunity, but he could not get that one to go as it bounced right off the stick. Somersault trying to escape the pressure of Allison, did. Walks down the far wall and lays it in behind. Brawlman awaits this in the near corner. Swings it right back around to Somersault on the far side. Playing it back to Andriopoulos. Makes a nice move around Singh. Tried to center one in front. Does not connect with Sally. Set in front again. Stolen here as well by Saker. Another chance there for Brawlman is thwarted. And Wasik will send this one on goal where it is stopped and covered by Daniel Rose. Three o two remaining in the first period. The Renegades are off to a magnificent start here in their home opener as they lead 5-0 over St. George. Kieran Ryan flung one wide off the draw. Taken here into the corner by Sullivan. Play back to Woods. Woods flung one off the stick of the other number 98. Luis Furtado played back to the right point again and it's Ryan flinging one wide again. Comes back to Ryan once more. Back down into the far half wall. Rendy creeps out and plays it back to Woods. Woods trying to shake off Furtado again. And he nailed him as Furtado was going after him. Toddington off a of steal. Clears it all the way down. This will be an icing against the Ravens. Jack Woods, another newly acquired player by North York. Saw a veteran guy on St. George and Reese Furtado come right after him. And he fended him off. Right well, still made a big play there. Into the corner, McKinstry creeps out to the side. Got it off. And a shot here from Woods' is stop. Stolen here and cleared out to center by Rigel Brar. Kieran Ryan. Left side, McKinstry off the stick. Hurtado trying to bring it up. Could not. Into the zone comes Ryan. Renegades are just dominating St. George here. Back down low. It is Billy Oat trying to escape the pressure of Bruyere. Into the corner again, Najem. Billy Oat couldn't knock that one down. And Eisen will bring this to center. Into the zone, he comes now. Rowan Eisen tried to shake off a man. But Chance was supported by McKinstry. Briere. Billio off a steal, dumps it into the corner. And then Grossi for St. George engages in a battle with him. McKinstry goes in there to help Billio out. Poked it loose to the wrong guy, though. Stolen here, but stolen right back by Najam off of Brar. Dumped back into the corner again. Grossi trying to spin away from McKinstry and did. Now he has it back in behind his net. McKinstry took a run at him, but took a spill. And this is skated to the center by Bruyere, played up the right side, and dumped in 
by Walsh as St. George goes for a change. Just under a minute to go in the first period as the Renegades ice this one. The face off will go back down to their end. They're up 5 0. Yes, they have five in the first. Somersault got the first one on the power play. And Braden Mitchell pulled off the Michigan for the second goal. And Salov got one. Mitchell got another to make it four. And the most recent one was Jake McKinstry's first goal as a renegade. Brought into the zone by Wintrant and lost control of it, but he got it right back and swung it around to the far side where Mancheesi comes it back into the corner. Then picked it up again and knocked it down for Wintrang to give it right back to him. Mancheesi plays it back to Stevenson. Shoots one off a couple of legs and in behind. Mancheesi centers one for Wintrang. Play is called. And what do we got? It was just the, the net coming off. It's pegs. Another chance there for Win Trang right there. But Daniel Rose has got to learn where, he, where he's going when he slides across trying to make a save. His net was knocked off quite a lot of times already. They only played it down for Wasik and then downs behind. Trying to center one, no luck, so downs is on it again. Sends one to the near side off the stick of Stevenson. Recovered in the near corner, though. Stolen right back again, and it is Saker. Then in behind the net is Ellis, but time ticks down. And the first period has come to an end. North York is off to a brilliant start. As they have dropped five on St. George, thanks to Summersall, Mitchell, Salov, Mitchell again, and McKinstry. At the end of the first period, the Renegades lead it five to nothing. Established in 1984, Abrams Towing is proud to be the largest towing service in all of Canada. Our fleet of over 125 vehicles is ready to go day or night, rain or shine, for any towing, recovery or roadside assistance needed. From motorcycles, cars and trucks to buses, motorhomes and heavy equipment hauling, there's no project we can't handle. Remember, while towing is our business here at Abrams, peace of mind is our specialty. So call or click today, you'll soon discover we're not like all the other guys. 1-800-267-4594. Blade Tech Hockey, the next step in the evolution of skate blades. Blade Tech Hockey out of Toronto, Canada has invented a unique flex force advantage technology that allows players to play faster and play longer. It works just like a one piece stick, flexes and whips back to launch a puck faster. Imagine that technology built into your skate blades. Flex force advantage has two main advantages. The first step when a player strikes the ice is the blade is designed to flex up into the holder. This cushions impact forces by up to 20% and also stores energy. At the end of a player's stride, the blade whips back and releases that energy to the player in the form of increased power and a speed boost. These blades have been scientifically proven to give players on average 5.5% increase in speed. Blade Tech Hockey only uses the highest quality steel to make their flexible blades. This means the edges stay sharper, longer, and all blades are backed by a one-year warranty. Blade Tech is used by hundreds of pro players around the world, including 15 of 20 New York Islander skaters, Boston College, as well as the 2018 Stanley Cup champion Washington Capitals, most notably Nick Backstrom. Blade Tech Hockey focuses solely on innovation and quality and is the next step in the evolution of skate blades. I don't endorse coconut water pretending to be a sports drink. Solo es la verdad. It feels so good to endorse something that you can actually stand behind. It's just the truth. It's just the truth. You gotta love when it's actually Bostel coming out the big sponsor bottles. Those in the know, know what's up. It's just the truth.
This is a must win. Simple things, chip pucks out, breakouts, call for passes, okay? Make sure that we're on the body all night. Let's go get a good warm up in and uh, get the two points tonight, okay? Come to the rink, uh, learn to be a professional every day. Try to make it to the next level all starts when you walk into this dressing room. Uh, we're a very proud North York Renegades uh, organization. We try to make kids uh, as better people and also better players. Uh, we try to teach them all assets of the game that they've never learned in their, in their uh, minor hockey career. What we try to instill in our guys is hard work, discipline, every day coming to the rink with the right attitude, being a good teammate, whether it starts in the morning with a workout, coming to the rink practice, stretching, eating right, all that good stuff. Well, the experience starts with, uh, see, like a typical Tuesday. Uh, we have guys uh, come early uh, that aren't in school, and they would go to the gym session. We have a private trainer here that uh, does it right out of the rink. Um, we're about an hour and a half on the ice. We do uh, a lot of conditioning, uh, a lot of gameplay film, and a lot of gameplay uh, positioning on the ice. We're trying to teach them that everyone at the next level is highly skilled, highly competitive. It's about treating your body right, getting prepared mentally every game and bringing in, bring it in and out every shift. You can't just bring it one night and then have a few nights off. The coaches and the general manager, they make a good, they do a good job of picking players out of complementary personalities, like guys that will, you know, they not only work well on the ice, but also keep a good room atmosphere. Guys who have come from a different uh, walks of hockey, but all have the same sort of goals and same sort of drive to get to that next level and really work together to support each other throughout the season. Our chemistry is, I mean, off the charts, like guys are, we're going to grab dinner, you know, hang out, you know, outside of hockey. So we really build a very close knit group, and that definitely shows on the ice, helping each other out, sticking up for teammates. So everyone, you know, we're all brothers here, and it's a, it's a great feeling. Our identity is basically hard work and show up to the rink every day, and just be a better teammate and player. The competition in this league is, is very challenging. You know, you have players coming from overseas. You have uh, guys that used to play in the OHL. It's a battle every game, and to make playoffs, it's, it's very tight every season, and it all comes down to what the players are taught throughout the season. You have that experience of those guys who, they've been there, so they know what it takes, and that they bring it to us, and they really treat this program like, you know, a real Junior A type of uh, place. What's always kept me here for the last three years has been the coaching. Like it's been just unbelievable coaching. It's the best coaching I've ever had in my life, um, unparalleled by anything I've had before. And uh, it's really helped my game improve over the last few years. The experience of myself being involved in uh, hockey for 15 years professionally, uh, just recently retired. I've developed myself into uh, being uh, being a coach that I like uh, to play for. Um, kids. Kids all around are, are having a good time and uh, you know just, just the way on and off the ice and learning how to be a professional. We have the coaching staff that has the experience and that will help them in practice and help them in games. You know, you're going to understand like what it's going to be like to go on a road trip. Um, it was a winning organization, you know, we're really you know, built on winning and uh, definitely the experience just having the older guys there and it's going to be great for them. You know, having players come from all overseas, it's, it's nice for them to come over to Canada and, uh, you know, show their skill uh, to move up to the next level. Our job as coaches are to put those kids in the right path, um, making sure their highs are not too high and their lows are too low. Um, I just, uh, every day I come to the rink and I focus on, on winning, uh, not just as a, as a coach, but pretending to be also a player. Um, it's also a good, a good, um, friendship to have with these guys. It's a great program with great coaching, so if you want to go to the next level, this is the best place to start. To come to the North York Renegades is meaning to win.
Abrams Towing has been in business since 1984 and is now Ontario and Canada's largest towing and recovery company and provider of motorist and transport services. Our staff members are fully screened and expertly trained by industry professionals as well as our in-house training and safety program. In addition to towing and motorist services, we conduct public vehicle auctions every six to eight weeks. Call us today. Hello and welcome back to Canlan Ice Sports York for the second period, the 23-24 season opener between the North York Renegades and St. George Ravens. Coming into the second period, the Renegades are leading by a score of five to nothing. Then I somersault, Braden Mitchell, Nikolai Salov, Braden Mitchell again, and Jake McKinstry. Renegades are off to a magnificent start. And we want to continue to dominate the rest of the way. Renegades to take the draw against Ellis, and period number two is underway. Rowan Eisen is on it, trying to center one for Ellis. Had some trouble with it, and then had some trouble with it again as Mitchell was all over him. Sent off a couple of skates and back in front. Stolen, tossed right back, and Andriopoulos will play this to center. Stolen, flung back down by Thomas Grossi. This is Somersault banking one off the glass, and out. And Randy has a two-on-one, potentially with Salov. Randy shoots one, top, right, Corner, make it six. You know, Randy has been a force to be reckoned with for the Renegades for a couple of years now. And he had a great chance in that two on one with Salov. He tried to sell it to the Defender trying to make it look like he might be passing it. Sort of that little body language, little little stick language prior to shooting that one, and he placed that thing perfectly. Top right corner to make it 6 0. So it's dumped back into the corner again where it is controlled by Billy O. Ooh. And Furtado came together because it's played to the back for Andriopoulos. And over to the left side is McKintry. Toe dragging a shot and a stop is made by Rose on that bid. Jake McKintry was looking for number two. Of McKinstry is at getting chances. He already has one. He nearly got another. He's had plenty of chances throughout this game. And I think it's safe to say that. Oh dear, here's number seven as Evan Gupta just banked one in off a of rose.
That's his first with the Renegades. And the route is on here in the second. I think it's safe to say that it's going to be a long night for the St. George Ravens. They are getting obliterated and Daniel Rose his night is done. Justin Sheets is going to be taking over for Rose between the pipes as Renegades have potted two quick goals here early on in the second. So here comes Lausch spun off nicely by Stevenson. Centering pass intended for Ellis is broken up and iced by North York. So the faceoff will come back down to the North York zone. And it'll be Ellis and Sally. And it is won by Ellis to the back. Briera shot missed wide left. Near side trying to keep it alive as Saker. And it's stolen off him and sent to center by Downs. Back ahead comes Cole Ellis. In of his own has two Renegades in front of him. Trying to drag it around, but couldn't get a chance there. I don't know why Ellis didn't pass that one to Brar. He was open on that left side. Renegades are called for an offside going the other way as Wasek was a step ahead of Downs. Another thing I would like to point out is with the lead being 7-0, one of the rules in the GMHL is when the lead is six goals or more, the clock will continue to run during stoppages. I like to call that the six goal rule. Where even when a team is up by six or more, even during stoppages, the clock will continue to run. So anyways, here's Rendy taking it around to the blue line. Ryan flung one off a body in front. Back in to the near side again. Play is called. And it looks like a penalty's coming up. And it's going to be served by Oren Grahlman. Didn't catch exactly what it was for, but something caught the official's attention and St. George is gonna have a chance to erase the goose egg. Right off the draw though, it is cleared all the way down by Ryan. So Sheets will play this aside. And back with this is Grossi. At the left side, Briere. Diagonal right side at Singen of the zone. So he's trying to make a move around. Woods, but got it off to Briere. Briere tried to center one, no luck, so he got it right back from Eisen. Drive missed wide on the left. Comes around to the right point, where Grossi lost it, and Salov has a two-on-one potentially with Rendy. Salov shoots one, and that is shrugged aside by Sheets, and it bounces up into the protective netting. And Justin Sheets had his mask knocked off after making that save that he and it fixed quickly, and he's going to be going to go again as the faceoff is coming up to his right. Najem in a take it against Ellis, and it is won by Najem. Kinsu try to keep it alive, swings one in behind, Najem's on it, and behind the net, gauging in a battle there with Toddington, stripped off him and played to center by Briere for a give and go to Warrens. In front again, off the stick of McKinstry. Into the corner, right back on it is Ellis. Trying to center one, no luck, so he takes it in behind, centers one in front again, comes to the line for Toddington. Toddington off to Warren's far side. Trying to center one, broken up there by McKinstry, and Summersall will play this out to center. And ahead comes Najem in a two-on-one with McKinstry. Got it off to McKinstry, and he missed wide on the right. 10 seconds to go, and the penalty on Grawlin. 
as it's played right back and Summersall trying to shake away for Tato. Still trying to get off of him. And penalty is over. So back to five aside as Grauman's out of the box. Back behind the net is Najem. He's in the corner here. Billy O engages in a battle. Popped up in behind, and Toddington's back on this for St. George. Played around a Warrens. And right back to him, and Toddington was nailed by Billy Oak. Out to center comes Rijo Brar. Summersall stole it off him and played it off to Andriopoulos and then McKinstry up the left side. In the zone, he comes down, McKinstry trying to center one. Broken up there by Toddington. And out to center. Stolen off of McDougal by Stevenson. Played it up the middle, and in comes Elias Najem. Najem works off to the left and gets it down low for McKinstry in the far corner. Then swings it around on the near side where Reale goes after this one. Back in behind the net, Toddington for St. George. Swinging it around to Warrens. And then a battle ensues along the far half wall. McKinstry comes away with this and tried to center one for Gupta. No luck. So it goes into the corner where it's Reale. Reale trying to shake away Briere. Centers one in front for Stevenson and a pad save is made by Sheets on that. And Tyler Warrens will pick it up and clear it all the way down. <coughs> and that is an icing against St. George. And, uh, they iced it. And a uh, couple of guys on St. George, Brar and McDougal, tried to sneak their way off for a change, but the official spotted them and said, hey, nope, nice try. You two have got to get back out here. Right off the draw, chance for Downs misses wide left. So into the corner goes Toddington trying to clear it. Can't kept with the left point by Stevenson. Long one off a of body into the corner. Going after this one is Win Trang. That is 89 out there. Right around again, and a battle ensues in the near corner. Controlled here by McDougal off that. Win off a of puck battle. Went out to center again, and Stevenson will spin away from McDougal and bring it into the zone. Stevenson centers one in front, too far for Manchisi to take, so he's got it again in the near corner. Back in behind, Win Trang will swing it around to the far corner where Stevenson gets on this one. Backhanded one of the front, and that does not go for Win Trang. Kept alive here though, and a penalty's coming up. It's gonna be Toddington for tripping. There's control, power play coming up for North York. It's a very easy one. Clock's still running. Call is actually slashing. I thought it was a trip. But the stick work, according to the official, was a bit more aggressive, so. Nonetheless, it's gonna be a power play for North York. Halfway through the second. Off the draw, it is played off to Andriopoulos. Then near side, it's Randy. Randy centering one in front, and Mitchell send one too far for Bilio to take. Back into the corner again. Randy trying to keep it alive and does. Played it away from Isaac. Into the middle, Salov off a leg into the corner. Back around comes to Mitchell. Mitchell trying to keep it alive and gets it down low. Bilio back into the corner again, it's Salov. Salov back to Mitchell, winds up and drives. Stop there in front. Sawa back on it again. Mitchell right point controls. Guarded closely by Eisen. Flung one into the corner where it's taken by Randy. Played around a Mitchell far half wall. Trying to shake away from Lausch. Played it around to Andriopoulos. Shoots one. Misses high. Comes around to Randy far half wall. Plays it back to Mitchell left point. Mitchell shoots one. Tip up high by Bilio and out of play. Yet another dominant shift by the North York Renegades on this man advantage. They were just out working St. George like no tomorrow. Mitchell had a couple of great chances. Andriopoulos had one. They are simply dominating St. George right now. Summer solid drive. Pad save is made by Sheets on that bid. And it's sent to center here by Furtado. Back on this is Stevenson. Playing off escape. McKinstry tried to recover, could not. 
Stolen right back by Furtado again. And toss back to the North Oak zone where it is controlled by Stevens. Penalty's over. Tonington's out of the box. We're back to five on five as McKinstry tries to keep it alive and did cycle it back down low. Too far for Gupta to take. Comes around again and it is Furtado bringing it into the zone. Laid it off to the right side off the stick of Ellis. And it is clear to center and here's a breakaway for Najamin all alone and he hit the post and the rebound is jammed in by Evan Gupta. That's his second of the game. Evan Gupta, who was brought in from quite a ways away, coming in all the way from Summerlin, British Columbia, with some great awareness after the first chance that Elias Najem had on that breakaway went off the post. Gupta was in the right place at the right time to pot the rebound into a four by six. Eight seems great for North York. Chance for Wasik off a leg into the corner. Well, battle ensues there. Came loose to the to an open side. Lausch will bring it up the right side and dump it down. Sing on it in the corner for St. George. Roughed off there by Ryan. And now they engage in a battle. And yep, oh dear. Total yard sale behind the play. Penalties coming up on St. George. And it looks like, yeah, that was Lausch that was challenging Downs to a scrap, but Downs wasn't gonna take the bait. And now, okay, Singh is going off, and so is Downs for North York. So I believe these are going to be offsetting minors, although we shall see what the two culprits will get. It looks like it is going to be a regular two on downs and I think it might be a misconduct on Singh. So it's a power play for North York I believe although actually that is not the case. There are five guys out there for St. George. It does appear that it's actually just two offsetting minors on Downs and Sing like I initially thought. So I was right the first time. Face off coming up to Gagne's left. Allison to take it for St. George. And he won it against Sally. Chance misses high from Grossi. And it gets tipped out of plate. Okay, now. I heard someone on St. George's bench tell Grossi to leave Wasik alone. He's kind of challenging him. Looks like before the Renegades aren't going to fall for that type of stuff. Played off to the right point. Chance for Grossi is blocked in front. Pinballed off a couple of guys and in behind where it is controlled by Jack Woods. Played around and ooh, well set. Was running too rather hard by Brar. Meanwhile, Sally with a chance. The sheet shrugs that aside. Back into the corner. It is Grauman on it. A couple of Ravens are on him. They continue mashing and bashing. Pried loose and it cannot be kept at the point by Jack Woods, so we'll have to go all the way back down to his own zone to corral this one. And play it up the left side. It is Grauman bringing it into the zone. Making a nice move. Sending one intentionally wide. Loose at the side of the net. They poke away at it, but it is covered rather quickly by Sheets. Eight nothing, the Renegades lead. Ever since the sixth goal was scored by Chris Rendy, 
the six goal rule has been in effect where the clock will continue to run during stoppages when a team is leading by six goals or more. Loose at the side, Braden Mitchell couldn't get that one by him. Chance for Rioli, and he goes far down to make it nine. St. George, I don't know what you do now. Probably just play the rest of the game and it's safe to say their coaching staff is going to give you guys quite a bit of a talking to after this one. Nice. York has just been all over them the whole way. Faceoff's coming up in the North York zone. It is McDougal against Randy, and it is one by McDougal, and a chance there misses wide. First chance for St. George in quite a while. Lost a stick, that was McDougal. Reale back on this. Yes, that is Reale, number 87 in white. His number 71 jersey has not arrived yet. Played up to Salov, send one one in front. Too far for both Reale and Rendy. Mitchell on it. Who is on Patrick Watch? Got it off in front, and play is stopped as Sheets stopped that bit and held on. Minute 22 and counting left in this middle frame. Simply dominating the way. Right off the draw, chance for Billy. It was stopped. Now Susan Death Valley, minute to go in the second. Playing around again, and it is sent to center, and ahead comes Logan Walsh in the zone. Trying to shake off Andreopolis, could not, so it's played back around, and Somersault will bring it into the zone. Somersault trying to get by Grossi, tried to leave one in front. Could not get that one to go, so Najum tries to center one. Comes to the line, bounces off from McKinstry, stick to center. Somersault. Andriopoulos with half a minute to go. Billy O will play it up off the skate of Sager. Now loose in behind, center one front for Billy O, and Sheets makes a stop on that and holds on. I think with time ticking down because the six goal rule, I think it's safe to say that they're just gonna let it go and let the remaining few seconds tick down to signal the end of period number two. So the Renegades continue to just dazzle as they get four more goals here in period number two. Randy got one. Gupta notched a pair, and Reale got one as well. That's where we stand after the second period. After 40 minutes, the Renegades lead it 9 to nothing. Established in 1984, Abrams Towing is proud to be the largest towing service in all of Canada. Our fleet of over 125 vehicles is ready to go day or night, rain or shine, for any towing, recovery or roadside assistance needed. From motorcycles, cars and trucks to buses, motorhomes and heavy equipment hauling, there's no project we can't handle. Remember, while towing is our business here at Abrams, peace of mind is our specialty. So call or click today, you'll soon discover we're not like all the other guys. 1-800-267-4594. Blade Tech Hockey, the next step in the evolution of skate blades. Blade Tech Hockey out of Toronto, Canada has invented a unique flex force advantage technology that allows players to play faster and play longer. It works just like a one piece stick, flexes and whips back to launch a puck faster. Imagine that technology built into your skate blades. 
Flex Force Advantage has two main advantages. The first step when a player strikes the ice is the blade is designed to flex up into the holder. This cushions impact forces by up to 20% and also stores energy. At the end of a player's stride, the blade whips back and releases that energy to the player in the form of increased power and a speed boost. These blades have been scientifically proven to give players on average 5.5% increase in speed. Blade Tech Hockey only uses the highest quality steel to make their flexible blades. This means the edges stay sharper, longer, and all blades are backed by a one-year warranty. Blade Tech is used by hundreds of pro players around the world, including 15 of 20 New York Islander skaters, Boston College, as well as the 2018 Stanley Cup champion Washington Capitals, most notably Nick Backstrom. Playtech Hockey focuses solely on innovation and quality and is the next step in the evolution of skate blades. I don't endorse coconut water pretending to be a sports drink. Solo es la verdad. It feels so good to endorse something that you can actually stand behind. It's just the truth. It's just the truth. You gotta love when it's actually Bostel coming out the big sponsor bottles. Those in the know, know what's up. It's just the truth. This is a must win. Simple things, chip pucks out, breakouts, call for passes, okay? Make sure that we're on the body all night. Let's go get a good warm up in and uh, get the two points tonight, okay? Come to the rink, uh, learn to be a professional every day. Try to make it to the next level all starts when you walk into this dressing room. Uh, we're a very proud North York Renegades uh, organization. We try to make kids uh, as better people and also better players. Uh, we try to teach them all assets of the game that they've never learned in their, in their uh, minor hockey career. What we try to instill in our guys is hard work, discipline, every day coming to the rink with the right attitude, being a good teammate, whether it starts in the morning with a workout, coming to the rink practice, stretching, eating right, all that good stuff. Well, the experience starts with, uh, see, like a typical Tuesday, uh, we have guys uh, come early uh, that aren't in school and they would go to the gym session. We have a private trainer here that uh, does it right out of the rink. Um, we're about an hour and a half on the ice. We do uh, a lot of conditioning, uh, a lot of gameplay film, and a lot of gameplay uh, positioning on the ice. We're trying to teach them that everyone at the next level is highly skilled, highly competitive. It's about treating your body right, getting prepared mentally every game, and bringing in bring it in and out every shift. You can't just bring it one night and then have a few nights off. 
the coaches and the general manager, they make a good, they do a good job of picking players out of complementary personalities, like guys that will, you know, they not only work well on the ice, but also keep a good room atmosphere. Guys who have come from a different uh, walks of hockey, but all have the same sort of goals and same sort of drive to get to that next level and really work together to support each other throughout the season. Our chemistry is, I mean, off the charts. Like guys are, we're going to grab dinner, you know, hang out, you know, outside of hockey. So we really build a very close knit group and that definitely shows on the ice, helping each other out, sticking up for teammates. So everyone, you know, we're all brothers here and it's, uh, it's a great feeling. Our identity is basically hard work and show up to the rink every day and just be a better teammate and player. The competition in this league is, is very challenging. You know, you have players coming from overseas. You have uh, guys that used to play in the OHL. It's a battle every game and to make playoffs, it's, it's very tight every season and it all comes down to what the players are taught throughout the season. You have that experience of those guys who they've been there so they know what it takes and that they bring it to us and they really treat this program like, you know, a real junior A type of uh, place. What's always kept me here for the last three years has been the coaching. Like it's been just unbelievable coaching. It's the best coaching I've ever had in my life, um, unparalleled by anything I've had before. And uh, it's really helped my game improve over the last few years. The experience of myself being involved in uh, hockey for 15 years professionally, uh, just recently retired. I've developed myself into uh, being uh, being a coach that I like uh, to play for. Um, kids. Kids all around are, are having a good time and uh, you know just, just the way on and off the ice and learning how to be a professional. We have the coaching staff that has the experience and that will help them in practice and help them in games. You know, you're going to understand like what it's going to be like to go on a road trip. Um, it was a winning organization, you know, we're really you know, built on winning and uh, definitely the experience just having the older guys there and it's going to be great for them. You know, having players come from all overseas, it's, it's nice for them to come over to Canada and, uh, you know, show their skill uh, to move up to the next level. Our job as coaches are to put those kids in the right path, um, making sure their highs are not too high and their lows are too low. Um, I just, uh, every day I come to the rink and I focus on, on winning, uh, not just as a, as a coach, but pretending to be also a player. Um, it's also a good, a good, um, friendship to have with these guys. It's a great program with great coaching, so if you want to go to the next level, this is the best place to start. To come to the North York Renegades is meaning to win. Abrams Towing has been in business since 1984 and is now Ontario and Canada's largest towing and recovery company and provider of motorist and transport services. Our staff members are fully screened and expertly trained by industry professionals as well as our in-house training and safety program. In addition to towing and motorist services, we conduct public vehicle auctions every six to eight weeks. Call us today.
Hello and welcome back to Camden Ice Sports York for the third period. 2023-2024 season opener between the North York Renegades and the St. George Ravens. It is nine zip coming into this closing frame. The Renegades have absolutely dominated throughout the first 40 minutes. Scoring nine, five in the first, and four in the second. A couple of Renegades are on hat trick watch. These two have two goals so far tonight. Those two are Evan Gupta and Braden Mitchell. Want to keep an eye out for 47 and 68 in point. I have to mention 68 is Braden Mitchell. He was originally assigned 72, but his 72 jersey is in Meanwhile, Toddington will try and spin this up to center, and it does get out with some help from Lausch. So it's played right back again, and Toddington's back on this. Try to clear it. Could not. Kept alive here by Gant and sent to the front. Too hot to handle for Wasson. So to center comes Rigel Brar. He'll spin and fire that one in. Gagne behind his net plays this aside for Andriopoulos and then Somersault. And then Wasik one touched it on a salad. Sick goal, so Eisen recovers and plays it off for Saker. And then it is Briere. Going to center. And Eisen will bring it in. And up that left side has Singh with him. Got it off to him, and Gagne makes a stop on that head. Taken in behind here again by Singh. Played off to Eisen, top of the right circle. He lost an edge, and that allows Grauman to pounce on that one and play this to center, and in the zone he comes. Shoots one just wide right. Karam's back out to center, and it goes all the way back down to the North York line. Eric Stevenson's on this one. Tries to spin away from that loose stick that's near him. Played it up to Gupta, who is on a trick watch. Shot one off the post and in. Toss the hats. It is indeed a hat trick for Evan Gupta. Well, Evan Gupta's got himself a hat trick in his first game with the Renegades, as you saw. Timothy Wynn Trang grab that puck and toss it into the North York bench. That's gonna be a big souvenir for the Summerlin BC native, Evan Gupta. As he pots a Hattie. And that is number 10. The six goal rule. As I've mentioned a few times before, if there's any of you just tuning in now, the clock is continuing to run during stoppages if a team is leading by six goals or more. And this has been the case ever since Chris Rendy scored the sixth Renegades goal in the second. Poked off a couple of guys into the corner. Wing Trang's on it, got it out around to Gupta. Back to the point at Stevenson. Already the other side, Reale tipped on on goal, and that's off of Grauman into the corner. Taken here by McDougal. In behind the net. Swung around, and Wing Trang will check him rather tightly and play it up to Warrens, who dumped it down. Stevenson had a stick lifted a couple times, but he's still got control of it as he spins away from Furtado. Now he'll we'll bring it ahead as we approach the four minute mark of the third. Stevenson, back on it again, plays it back to Reale, right point. Makes a nice move. And then goes after it in the corner. And in behind, Grauman couldn't knock it down, so it goes around to the near half wall where he is met by Warrens. Tried to play it back, but it couldn't be kept by Salov. So Stevenson's back on it. Played it up quickly to Reale. Off escape and recovered here nearly by Ellis, but it's stolen right back and played up diagonally up the left side of Salov. Moving in with a ton of speed, got a chance there, stop, rebound is swept away at the last second. Nice play by Thomas Grossi. Comes back all the way down. 
Gagne lets this one go for Ryan. And this is played up the left side, and the speedy Salov will come in again. Sends one in front too far for Braden Mitchell. He to Victor entering this third. Here we got a hat trick, and now you can toss the hats here as well. It is a hat trick for Braden Mitchell. It's a wacky play. It bounced off a couple of bodies on the way through. And Mitchell kept his eye on that thing and it almost sort of bounced right to him and he just knocked that thing in. So now, with the route being already as massive as it is, one rule that I first learned a year ago was when a team is leading by 10 or more and the game ends, and it'll just be 10, and it's 10, 11, 12, whatever. The final score will read 10 more than 10. So while Mitchell's goal that made it 11 will count toward his Oh dear, there was almost number 12, but McKinstry was stopped at the last second by Toddington. Back to what I was saying earlier, that like, let's say if nobody scores for the rest of this one and it ends up 11. While Mitchell's goal would count towards his individual stats, the goal wouldn't really count on the scoreboard. It would just be 10 nothing. Even though the Renegades have 11, it would be the official ruling. It does seem somewhat odd, but that is the rule that I have learned a year ago. But meanwhile, this is Saker. Letting this one slide to center. Alice will bring it in. Shoot one right on goal, and an easy save is made by Gagne. Holds on. Nisaf coming up to Gagne's right. And the draw is one. But chance there at the side of the net. Scramble for it there. They poke away at it. And play is called because... I believe, yeah, it was Gagne's mask was knocked off. Yeah, as soon as I saw the rugby scrum break out in front, Gagne's mask was knocked off his noggin, and play was whistled down immediately, even though the puck was still loose at the side of the net there. And that scramble in front. So now, as Gagne appears to have his mask issue sorted out again, we're good to go with Alice taking the draw against Sally. To Gagne's right. And it is won by Sally, but a chance for St. George. Furtado had a bid. Broken up instantly by Somersault. Played up again, and this is brought ahead and into the zone by Downs. Plays called for an offside, though. Yeah, it looked like it was Andriopoulos. There was a little bit ahead of the play there as Nathan Downs tried to bring that one in. Time continues to tick on the clock with the six goal rule having been in effect since Randy made it six nothing back in the second. Dumped down and it is Saker. Then Mancheesi for North York. 
Playing it back to Win Trang, who gives it right back to him. And she's the end of the middle for Gupta. Bumped it back to Andriopoulos. Shoots one tip right on and a save. Rebound is swept away and controlled here by McDougal and played to center. Somersault. Ooh, he was upended at center by McDougal. That gives the St. George bench something to cheer about. We've been getting dominated on the scoreboard, so we might as well have something positive to look for. And that too, McDougal is just being an absolute menace here defensively on this shift. Andriopoulos spinning away from Lausch. Tried to play it up the right side, no luck. Brower was in his way, so we'll bring it in up the left side, Andriopoulos will. Centers one in front, broken up there as Eisen got that away from Mancheesi. Mancheesi's got it again though and plays it back in behind where Grossi is met by Wintrang. Meanwhile, Andriopoulos off the post. What a chance there for Nico Andriopoulos looking for his first bid, but now here's a partial break for Eisen. Penalty coming up, and he is stopped. Eisen's got it again though, as he was tied up, as he was getting on a partial breakaway. Pump fake fed over to Death Valley. Big hit there, plays called. And I think it's safe to say this has gotten to be quite a, a rock em sock em shift. All right until play was called. The first penalty was going to be on St. George. It's a hold on one of the Ravens, I believe. But then a call was a hit from behind. Well, the, the first one, yeah, it was a breakaway for Eisen on St. George. So that one, the first... So yeah, both of them are on North York, on uh, Win Trang and Andriopoulos. So it's a five on three with two penalties called at the same time. And Randy will steal it, It's spin away. So yeah, both, both of the penalties that were called here, both on North York. Here's a chance, Randy shorthanded is stopped by Sheets. Check that, Rose is back in net now for the Ravens. Just notice now that 31, Daniel Rose is back between the pipes for the St. George Ravens. And anyways, ahead comes Saker. Moving up through the middle. Moving off to the right as he gains the zone. A minute to go in the two-man advantage for the Ravens. Nice play, but it somehow is kept alive by Briere. Come back down again. Stevenson spins off Singh and clears it to center. Saker. Plotting and scheming and playing it up the left side off the stick of Briere and brought in to the zone here by McKinstry. Couldn't go anywhere, so toss it back for Reale to kill some more time off these two penalties. And he's Back in his own zone here again, trying to sort of play keep away from St. George, but he could only do it for so long. Furtado will bring it back in, take it in behind. Now he tried to jam one in the back side, but Gagne was ready and sealed it off rather nicely. And it's cleared all the way down, just as the penalties were set to expire. Both Andriopoulos and Win Trang are back out of the box, and we are back to even strength. Ooh, big collision there as Win Trang was steamrolled by Warrens. Brought back up again, and into the zone comes Karen Ryan. Ryan looking for Najem in front. Didn't get it to him initially, but now he does. Ryan back on it again, plays it in behind for Bilio. Centers one in front, intercepted here by McDougal. He will bring this to center. And it was run off nicely by Bilio. And he'll bring it in, make a nice move. Down stop escape right to Jack Woods, who pings one off the post and in for number 12. That's his first goal with the North York Renegades. And the onslaught continues.
Yeah. George. He's just wondering what in the holy jump and hit him. Jack Woods. Right after the Ravens fight. Ooh, geez, big collision there as Walsh lit up Walsic. But that chance for Jack Woods, he just ranked it off the post and in. And George didn't really have anything go their way tonight. This look has been dominant ever since the opening face-off. 12 so far. Four and a quarter separate the Renegades from the blowout victory in their season. Drilled down by Ellis with just under four minutes to go. Comes around again, and it is Sally losing it. Walsic's back on it again. Sally gives it right back to him. Walsic waits, tries to toe drag move, but he lost control of it, and Rossi lifted a stick. Rossi back on it again at his own line. Looking for room up the left side, finds Sick. Into the zone. Making a nice move, but not stop there. And it's set in front again. Warrens couldn't get that one to go. Another drive is blocked in front on a chance for Briere. Goes all the way back down to the St. George zone. Wasik has to shake off a pair of Ravens. Back down low again. He's got him in the corner. And Ellis ran him off, and Eisen checked that. That was Grossi that nailed him. Not number 10, it was number 16 that got him. Ooh, geez. Downs just nailed Warrens. As Andriopoulos is back with it with a little under three left in this one. Downs. Makes a nice move. Tried to barge his way through, but was bodied off nicely, and Rose will cover. And it looks like another penalty's coming up. I think it's going to be on Downs, as I overheard an 88 being called, although... It appears that Downs is still sort of waiting for an explanation. The other referee is calling for someone. It's actually not Downs. I thought I heard an 88, but no, it is Kate Evan Briere for interference. The Renegades will essentially be on the power play for the rest of the game. It'll be up a man until there's 10 seconds left. Summersall off the draw, leaves it over for Manchisi to give it right back to him, skate to six. Summersall gives off to Andriopoulos. Andriopoulos waits, wings one off the stick of Furtado and chop back down low again for Downs. Downs takes it into the corner, leaves it there for Manchisi and gets it right back. Then plays it to Summersall right point, walks the line, shoots one, scores! That's his second of the game. It looks like it went straight in. And that is lucky number 13 for the North York Renegades. And Jedi Summersall got the scoring started as his second. Just a straight away shot from the point. Just couldn't do much on that one. 46 seconds to go. The Renegades have potted 13. The final score will read 10 0, even though the Renegades put 13 into the St. George net. That is the ruling. Mitchell's 11th, 
the 11th goal by Mitchell, the 12th by Woods, and the 13th by Summersall, I believe will count for their individual stats. Final score will read 10 0. Nick Gagne has a shutout in his Renegades debut as the final Horn Sounds. So game number one is in the books. North York dominated this one from start to finish. And excelled in every way you can possibly think of. Blowout victory over St. George. So here are the three stars of the game. Number three star, I'm gonna give it to the captain, Jedi Somersault, part of a pair of goals, the first one and the last one. The number two star, gonna give it to Evan Gupta, who scored a hat trick, seven, eight, and 10, to be specific. And the number one star, who's also made his Renegades debut, Braden Mitchell, his first goal was a beauty pulling off the Michigan move. That was the second goal. And then he potted a couple more, those being number four and number 11. So as mentioned before, even though the Renegades got 13 by, the final score will read North York Renegades 10, St. George Ravens zero. And that's gonna do it from Canlan. For watching and we will see you tomorrow afternoon at 2.30 p.m. in Rink 1 when the Renegades face the Toronto Flyers. Good night, everyone.